Now, this morning we're going to begin a series or a, a part of this series that we're talking about now. We're going to look at a deeper definition of grace. We need a fuller meaning of grace. I'm teaching you how to live by grace, but I don't think people really understand what it is. What we do understand is correct, but it's so much more. Unmerited favor, absolutely right, but it's so much more. Love, absolutely right, but it's so much more. And so today is going to challenge you to understand what grace is and to look at your life and discover the areas that you've been doing and living by that's not the grace life. So let's begin as we, as we, we look at this in John chapter 1, verse 14 and 17. Let's look at it in the King James and in NLT. John 1, 17. The objective of the next couple of weeks is that we want a fuller, more comprehensive, more practical, complete understanding of what this grace is. All right, verse 14 says this, The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Now, who is the only begotten of the Father? Jesus. Jesus. All right, so watch this. Jesus, the only begotten of the Father, watch this, full of grace and truth. Now, the truth is grace. So Jesus is full of grace, which is the truth. Jesus, full of grace, which is the truth. Now, move on down to verse 17 in King James. <clears throat> For the law was given by who? Moses. But grace, which is the truth, came by who? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So, please understand something. Jesus Christ is the source of all of this grace. He is full of grace. And, 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 and there are people who are more connected to religion and doing church, but not Jesus. The, 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 the grace that we're talking about, grace and Jesus are one. Grace is not just a curriculum. It's not just a teaching. Grace is a person. Jesus is full of grace, which is the truth. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. So, so that you won't get so lost, every now and then you need to remind yourself when you're talking about grace, we're talking about a person. Jesus is that person full of grace and truth. Now, let's go back and look at these two verses in the, in the NLT. Oh, man, what? What are all these scriptures in teaching? Sometimes at church, you just got to get some teaching. <laughs> Don't get mad at that. Church should, church should have never become an entertainment hour. And we spent years learning how to do church, and it, what did it leave us? We, it left us with the situation where we don't know how to do life. We don't know what to do when the finances are short. We don't know what to do when sickness knocks on the door. We don't know what to do when we feel offended and hurt. We don't know what to do. And so we got to get fed. Verse 14, so the Word became human. Yeah. And made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love. Notice, what, notice how he translates grace here. He, he was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. Unfailing love, love that cannot fail, won't fail. Verse 17, for the law was given through Moses, but God's unfailing love and faithfulness came through Jesus Christ. His unfailing love, his love that will not fail, came through Jesus Christ, and it's called grace. Now, let's deal with some practical things here. Grace never, ever means a license to sin. Grace never means permission to sin. Grace never means tolerance and permis permission to just continue to misbehave. That's not what grace is. The, grace still has this objective. Holiness is still the objective of grace. Now, let me show you how, how religion has done us. It's okay for the most part for a long time 
to hear that grace is, 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 is a license to sin. It is not a license to sin, as some people think. On the contrary, grace is, is, is that which prevents a believer from sinning. Grace is what stops you from sinning. Grace is not what causes you to sin. Somebody says, well, you know, I, I, I love the message of grace, but, well, you know, we, gotta, we can't talk about grace too much because people get to hearing that grace too much, they're going to start living careless lives. No, it's because they're not hearing it, and it's because they don't understand it. Grace is never responsible for you sinning. You can't hop into bed with Miss Bessie and, and then hop out and time out, well, I'm under grace. <laughs> grace didn't have nothing to do with that. Grace is not a license or permission to sin, but grace is what will help you to stop sinning. Grace prevents sin. Amen. Think of that. Grace prevents sin. Now, because of this, there's a lack of understanding of grace. And so it is necessary to consider the true meaning of grace. Now, I'm going to give you what I feel is the complete definition for grace, if you could just put that on the screen because it's long, <laughs> and then I'm going to work on breaking it down. Here's what I believe grace is. Grace is unmerited abounding provision. When something abounds, it continues to increase. Grace is unmerited. That means you can't do anything to deserve it. It's unmerited abounding provision of the unrestrained operation of God's infinite love that comes through Jesus Christ <laughs> on behalf of man, especially for those who depend on him. So you see why it's going to take some time to break this down. It is the unmerited, abounding provision. Grace is a provision, and it's, it's, it's nothing you can do to get it, nothing you can do to deserve it. It's unmerited, abounding, constantly increasing. Provision. It's provision. Grace is provision. It's provision of the unrestrained. So at one time, this love was restrained, but it's provision of the unrestrained operation. There's an unrestrained operation of God's infinite love that's over us, a, a love that can't be restrained, that's free to operate. And it all works through Jesus Christ, but and, and it works on behalf of mankind, I'll show you that grace was given for mankind, for you. Somebody, won't, won't, won't God show Satan some grace? It, it wasn't, grace wasn't given for Satan. <laughs> Hell was given because of what he did. Grace was given for mankind, especially, here are the ones who are going to really walk in it, especially those who depend on him. Especially those who depend on him. Who? So if, you're, if you've made your life up and made a declaration of dependence, boy, you're going to bump into this abounding provision of God's unrestrained operation of his infinite love that works through Jesus Christ especially for those who depend on him. Amen. All right, now, let me see if we can break this down. Let's start off with this word providence, God's providence. It's literally talking about his, his care of everything that he created. Uh, God's providence, his protective care, it's the protective care of God in his provision for all of his natural creation. In other words, God's providence is that all of his natural creation, he has provided nourishment and care for it. It is God's providence is all of everything that God created, he had to provide the care and the nourishment for it. Let me give you a few examples until you can get this. For example, rain, sunshine, and the elements in the earth are part of his provision or providence for plant life. He created plant life, 
and now he has provided the necessary provision and nourishment for plant life, sun and rain. If you understand that, say amen. amen. Look at another one, food. Food for animals and all other things needed to sustain their lives, that's a gift of God's care and God's providence. So if he created animals, he's committed to make sure that they have food and all the things they need for care and nourishment. So also our food and clothing and shelter and everything needed for the well-being of man's natural life. So the well-being of our natural life, God is committed through his providence, provision, so that, so that he has available all of the nourishment you'll ever need, all of everything you need to care for your natural life. I'll even go farther than that. There's probably no sickness in this world that somewhere on the earth God got something. Man just trying to discover what all of it is. That's his providence. God's providence for his creations, though, how do I say this? Because of man's sin in the garden, it's partially withheld and partially limited by the curse because of sin, but his providence and his nourishment and his care for mankind has never failed. Now, if you understand all that, say amen. All right, now watch this. Grace is a similar great and abounding provision of God. Grace is like the food that was provided for the animals. Grace is like the sunshine that was provided for plant life. Grace is a similar provision uh, provided by God. But instead of being for the physical creation, it is essentially for the spiritual realm. Grace is a provision for the spiritual realm. It is a provision of God to restore all that was lost spiritually because of man's sin. And think about this, man sinned and lost his whole relationship with God, and God says, all right, I am going to create a new creation in man, but I got to get a provision for that new creation to be nourished and cared for once man gets it. Glory to God. It's lost spiritually because of man's sin. Now it makes it possible, he says, to sustain a new creation, a new creation that's going to be on a higher plane than any other creation. When you got born again, the old you departed. The new creation came on the inside. In order to nourish that new man in you, <laughs> God had to provide grace because that's the only way he can care and nourish you. So when there are situations that happen in your life and you feel condemned, grace has got to come in to nourish that new man to keep you in the place you ought to be because the devil's going to try to destroy you, but he has nothing like the grace of God nourishing your new man, and now everything about you comes from that new man out. Your entire value system and who you are is based on that new man that you now have. I am the righteousness of God that was, that was given to me through the grace of God, and now that righteousness in me flows out of my new man, affects my soul, and I now wear the identity of righteousness. <sighs> Y'all, you getting this? This is so strong. So grace is God's care and nourishment for the spiritual realm designed to nourish the new creation, once you say, I believe Jesus, and the old man leaves, and the new creation comes in, grace is now what's going to keep you nourished and keep you right and never, ever go back to the devil. And the devil says, wait a minute, I only got one thing. If they don't believe it, I can get them. Oh, that's true. 
If they don't believe it, I can get them. If they don't believe it, I can get them. And religion has been Satan's attempt to keep you away from this gift of grace. This great provision of God is summed up in Romans chapter 8, 32. Turn there. This great provision of God is summed up in Romans chapter 8 and 32. This is awesome. Now watch this. He that spared not his own son. Well, he that spared not grace. You, thought, you see that? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? All right, so now watch this. He nourished us with Jesus, grace, so he can give us all things. <laughs> he nourished us with grace so he can give us all things. There is nothing that God can't do for you when you believe in Jesus and begin to allow this grace to show up in your life. Now, as re that was all the bulk of what we're doing, so now let's break it down. I want to talk about sevenfold definition of grace, which gives me opportunity to break down that big definition and also break down what we're talking about now. I like to get stuff in you so it can be moving around, so then when I say it in a clearer way, you like, the light bulb comes on and you really get what happens here, all right? So, what is grace? Sevenfold definition of grace. Here's the first slice, the first slice. Grace is the operation of God's love. Grace is the operation of God's love to them that believe and receive Jesus and receive this providence and this provision of grace. Now, I'm going to go through several scriptures, in fact, five right here, and I want you to see if you can locate the operation of grace in each one of them. All right? First one, John 3, 16. You don't have to turn now. I hope you know that. For God so what? Love the world. All right, what's his operation? That he gave his only begotten son, and his son is grace, right? So God so loved the world, did just like Titus. He's made salvation available to the whole world. All right, he, he loved the whole world. God so loved the whole world uh, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, what? Believe. Believeth in him, believeth in him, should not perish but have everlasting life. This is an operation of God's love that I love you so much I gave my son so that you won't perish but have everlasting life. So we take that so lightly. I'm telling you, he loved you. I mean, get, which one of your kids are you going to give up? Which one of your kids are you willing to give up? And I'm, I'm going to say this ahead of time. I'll say it again. Jesus died for his enemies. That, that's mind-boggling. He died for his enemies. And you think about somebody that done dogged you out, gave you a hard time, and you're like, I ain't dying for them. <laughs> Jesus died for his enemies. That's an operation of his love that came by grace, that came by Jesus. Look at the second scripture, Hebrews 2 and 9 in the NLT. Hebrews 2 and 9 in the NLT. He says, what? What we do see is Jesus, who for a little while was given a position a little lower than the angels, and because he suffered death for us, look at that operation. He died for us. He is now crowned with glory and honor. So, we, so when I talk about I love you, we see him operating like this. Yes, by grace, Jesus tasted death for everyone. So when I talk about I love you, there's an operation of it. He died for you. He died for, listen, he died for everyone that is ever going to be born on the earth so they would all have the same opportunity to believe him. Let's keep going. John 1 and 16, the giving of the Son of God in, in death for every man is said to be by grace. 
is said to be by grace. For God so loved the world, gave his own God son, that was by grace. John 1, 16, he says, from his abundance, we have all received one gracious blessing after another. From his abundance, gracing blessings after another. See, see, see look at the operation of God's love. Uh, grace upon grace. Uh, one one ble blessing after another. Grace upon grace. And, and, and I'm telling you, it, it's going to be like bam, bam, grace upon grace upon grace. Bro, ba, ba, shot, I, but, it's, but all of that's going to come from his abundance. Glory to God. Be careful not to take credit for something you don't know about. Talk about what you know. Don't be careful not to do that. I'm telling you in the name of Jesus, out of his abundance, we have received one gracious blessing after another. Has anybody ever received a blessing from God? I'm telling you, it came out of his abundance. Those who receive grace upon grace out of his fullness are the same who Jesus loved until the end. And then John 13 and 1, he talks about those who he loved uh, until the end. It was his disciples that he loved until the end. All right, now look at this, Ephesians 1 and 4 in the NLT. Even before he made the world, God loved us, chose us in Christ to be holy and sanctified and without fault in his eyes before the world. How you do that? Before the world. God called the end at the beginning. He didn't wait to the end to see it, to call it. He saw it at the beginning before the end showed up. And God saw at the end that you would be holy and without fault in his eyes. He knew a Jesus would come. He knew grace would be provided. He called your number at the beginning before you were born and before he made the world. Glory to God. It's supposed to be. Look at Ephesians 2 and 7, NLT. Ephesians 2 and 7. So God can point to us <laughs> oh, in all future ages as examples of his incredible wealth of his grace and kindness towards us as shown in all he has done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. And God says, we're going to be the example. Somewhere around our future, I don't know, maybe it's in heaven or whatever, but we're going to be the example. We're going to, we're going to be the ones that he says, come here. The, you guys who were under the age of grace, come here. You are the examples of the incredible wealth of grace that I showed. <laughs> 